I don't want to say the Rams cut too many people, but they don't even have a kicker right now. Tony Gonsolin pitches two months without an elbow ligament, and USC's coaching staff continues to happy talk that defense. Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the faithful Angelino's Morning Report. It is August 30th, 2023. It is glorious to be back home. My wife is glorious. I have every intention of staring at her until she becomes extremely uncomfortable after I'm done with this clip. But in the meantime, let's talk LA sports. If you like being in the know about LA, click it clack the like button. Click it clack the subscribe button. There's a notification bell. Hit that, it'll let you know when we drop new content. Sharing is caring, let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. There's always interesting stuff to talk about in LA. And I'm here to tell you some of the stuff we're gonna talk about today, it's gonna to be interesting. Before we go through the news and notes, a look at the scoreboard. Mookie Betts and Will Smith both hit home runs and the Dodgers molly -wop Arizona nine to one. Clayton Kershaw gets his 12th win. Meanwhile, if there is such a thing as an important game in the WNBA, Last night's was it, and Chicago edged the Sparks 76-75. With the win, Chicago pulls to within one game of LA for the last playoff spot in the WNBA. But the Sky have only four games left to go in the regular season. By the way, the Sparks, the best record they could hope for at the end of the regular season is 500. Meanwhile, today, Arizona's playing the Dodgers again at seven. Ryan Pepio is zero and zero with an ERA of two. And Brandon Pafad, Pafad. I'm sure he's a nice guy. I wish I knew how to pronounce his name, Pafad. He is one and six with a 5.91 ERA. It's Galaxy Game Day as well. They're playing at San Jose at 7.30. LA has just one loss in its last nine MLS games. But let's get to the news because we need to talk. You know I'm a Rams fan, or most people should know I'm a Rams fan, but I believe in tough love. Keep it at 100, yo. And I have to be frank, I have always found some of the Rams' recent drafts to be quietly disturbing. Sure, they traded away picks, the top picks, the whole F the picks thing, to get elite talent to bring them in, and I'm okay with that. But now they have to rely on their draft. They have to rely on their draft as part of this so-called remodel. Who have the Rams drafted recently and how well have they been? Well, yesterday when it was NFL cut down day, we got a glimpse as to how bad some of the Rams recent drafts has been. Do you want me to give you an example of why Rams drafts might make your blood run cold? They cut Logan Bruss. Cut him. Now, granted, he was a third round pick, but he was the top pick for the Rams in last year's draft. And remember, they thought for a third rounder, this guy was can't miss. They were so excited to get Logan Bruss, so excited that a scout celebrated by jumping off the roof of their draft house that they rented, their draft mansion, jumped off the roof into a pool to celebrate. And now Logan Bruss is cut literally just one year later. I will say now the trade a couple of days ago with Pittsburgh for offensive lineman Kevin Dotson makes a lot more sense. You know, I was sitting there thinking, wait a second, there's another move coming when you trade for Kevin Dotson who started 17 games for the Steelers last year. And it's kind of obvious, Russ simply can't cut it. Now granted he was injured last year, but again, a top draft pick that the Rams straight up swung and missed on. Straight up swung and missed. For that matter, they cut a fourth rounder from recent years. Robert Rochelle, cornerback, started a lot of games for the Rams, gone. And by the way, they have no kicker. The Rams do not have a kicker. The Rams would have been okay with the guy that they had, Tanner Brown, a rookie, they were, would have been okay with him. They didn't think he had a particularly strong leg, so they weren't going to trust him with super long field goals. They just wanted him to knock down the easy ones. And apparently, from what, the, from what people have said, his kicks kept trailing off to the left, back and to the left, back and to the left. 
Yes, I just referenced the Kennedy assassination while talking about the Rams special teams. I totally understand. But none of those things are good. Oh, and by the way, uh, remember how LA has pretty much no pass rush? They cut a second year player, Keir Thomas, who is the only guy to get to the quarterback during the preseason for the Rams. So do the Rams actually have an idea of who they're drafting? Because they just cut a lot of picks that theoretically should be starters for them as part of this remodel. Tony Gonsolin didn't, did, I should say, Tony Gonsolin did something that I don't think pitchers should do. Ignore elbow pain. I'm by no means a pitcher or a pitching coach. I do have a friend who was uh, signed by the Toronto Blue Jays to play in their minor league system, and we did chat about it a little bit last night. And I'll tell you what he told me, but I want to give you the news first. Tony Gonsolin, who is now going to be gone for the rest of this year and next year because of t upcoming Tommy John surgery, told The Athletic that he would be pitching warm-ups for the last two months and it was extremely painful for him. But he would keep throwing all the way up until the national anthem in the hopes that the elbow would stop hurting. Craziness. He apparently knew, and the Dodgers knew, that it just wasn't, quote, elbow inflammation, or I should say, forearm inflammation. That was the original report last week when Gonsolin went on the 10-day injured list and Dave Roberts was like, nah, man, he's out for the year. Don't expect it back. Over forearm inflammation. It turned out it wasn't the forearm, it was a tear in the ulnar collateral ligament. Now Gonsolin said, we're trying to piece together the story. And I think I do have it pieced together. Because if you're sitting there saying, wait a second, bro, why are you letting this guy pitch when his elbow is clearly in pain for months? Gonsolin said the Dodgers did keep asking him if he needed to shut it down. And Gonsolin refused. The story didn't add up. It did not add up because the Dodgers apparently knew that he had a torn ulnar collateral ligament in June. So I talked to my friend because he had surgery as well. A lot of pitchers do. My friend said that yes, you can in fact pitch with a blasted out ulnar collateral ligament, provided the inflammation isn't too bad. But that is rare, it's rare. So there was that little bit of wiggle room that Gonsolin and the Dodgers had. There wasn't enough inflammation to shut it down. And then of course, that also explains last week why the original reason to shut it down also made sense, forearm inflammation. In other words, you can pitch if it's not inflamed. The forearm got inflamed. That's why Dave Roberts said, we're not expecting him back this year. They got the confirmation, et cetera, et cetera. So now the story, which before didn't add up, in my opinion, does. It doesn't necessarily make it good, neither for the Dodgers or for Gonsolin. Maybe you could argue that the, God, that the Dodgers should have been more forceful in shutting down Gonsolin, but surgeon Neil L. Attache said it could not get any worse for Gonsolin. One way or another, Gonsolin was going to need the elbow surgery. So they were just like, hey, ride it until you know you can't pitch anymore. And Gonsolin did not have a counterpoint to it, didn't want to argue against it. He wanted to pitch. So again, a story that didn't add up as recently as yesterday pretty much adds up now. It doesn't absolve anybody involved. It's just one of those really ugly situations where there's no right answer. Have you ever, I'm a writer. I don't know how many of you guys write poetry, journals, maybe manifestos out in a cabin out in the woods. I don't know how much often you guys write. But sometimes I write something and I think it's intelligent and then I pause, I look at it and I realize I'm full of more crap than a broken septic tank. So I bring that up because I literally was trying to write down positives about the USC defense last week in their game against San Jose State. 
I was looking at one highlight pick after another. I was trying to find anything positive to spring about that lousy defensive performance against San, San Jose State. I actually wrote that I thought, thought Eric Gentry provided some stability. Wrong, wrong. San Jose scored on Eric Gentry too. But I'm right telling you this now because with time between game one and game two, we are getting the quotes from Lincoln Riley. We are getting the quotes from defensive coordinator Alex Grinch. And it is the same happy talk that we heard last year. I'm reminding you that these are almost the exact same quotes that we heard from the Trojans coaching staff last year. Quote, we had a couple of critical errors that held us back, unquote. That's from Lincoln Riley, and that stuff was said last year. This is from Alex Grinch. Quote, I'm extremely excited after week one and very disappointed by individual plays, unquote. Same crap we heard last year. I'm saying this not because I hate the Trojans. Everybody who watches this show knows I'm a big USC Trojans fan. I'm trying to be honest with you guys. Until the results show on the field, there's no reason whatsoever to trust what we're hearing out of the USC coaching staff. None. We had been following the good and the bad of Chargers rookie wide receiver Quentin Johnston. CBS is even giving letter grades week by week during the preseason to tell you about first round draft picks. And we're just keeping you up to date. Johnston last week got a B for his week three effort. He had two receptions. He put on some decent moves. He only gained 10 yards. Okay, what else? The Chargers, just like the Rams, also had to make room or make moves to get down to 53 players. Uh, some were necessary due to injury. Wide receiver Jalen Guyton was placed on the physically unable to perform list. That means he's gonna be out four weeks. Um, he had torn his anterior cruciate ligament. That's a knee ligament as opposed to Gonzalez's elbow. The anterior cruciate ligament in week three of last year, had he been healthy, he would have been in the one, he would have been in competition for the number four wide receiver on the Chargers. He would have been competing with Johnston. He would have been competing with Joshua Palmer. The upshot is this, is that once Guyton gets back, I think the Chargers have a pretty deep wide receiver room. A lot of teams would be envious of that wide receiver group. According to general manager Tom Telesco, rookie quarterback Max Dugan, who was waived, uh, they are hoping that he clears waivers and that he can rejoin the team on the practice squad. There were very few surprises with the Chargers cuts yesterday, and that's important. I didn't think Elijah Dotson would make the team because he only had one tremendous second half against the Rams in the preseason. But he did, and apparently the reason is because he can return kicks along with fourth-round pick Darius Davis. He's a special teamer. Nothing wrong with it. It's a job. There were not any real shockers for the Bolts on cut-down day, and I think if you're a Chargers fan, I think you should be very happy about that. It means that you know what you're getting on offense. You know who you're playing on defense. These cuts, these moves were all about depth preferences. That is good news. That's good news. By the way, give credit to uh, UCLA wide receiver Jake Bobo for not giving up on his dreams. Remember, the dude ran a five second 40. That is terrible. Absolutely terrible. It was running like he was carrying a refrigerator and stopped halfway along for, to go get a beer. That's how slow he was. So he's undrafted. He worked his way onto the Seattle Seahawks roster. <coughs> Quote, just make plays. All us undrafted guys have a chip on our shoulders for sure. That's been my mentality through this whole thing, unquote. So if you're a UCLA football fan, be happy for Jake Bobo. He grinded, he got himself a gig. Galaxy midfielder Ricky Pooge was fined by MLS for putting his hand on the face, head, and or neck of a Chicago Fire player last week. And I gotta tell you, this is kind of a garbage fine if you ask me. I watch a lot of soccer. Every time there's a foul, you always see the guys get up, you know, the guy who committed the foul, he puts his hand on the head. He's like, hey, man, it's, it's, a, it's a European thing. 
It's like, hey, I'm sorry. I went a little too far. My dad, we're still boys, right? But the Chicago Fire player apparently acted apparently acted like he wanted Ricky Pooch to go to HR for sexual harassment training. Why? Why was Ricky Pooch fined for something like this? Soccer players are touching each other on the head all the time to show there's no hard feelings. So I gotta tell you something, Mr. Pooch, and I don't know if you watch this channel at all, but if somebody who watches the Galaxy a lot, who knows Galaxy players, little unsolicited advice. If you're going to get fined for putting your hand on somebody's head, get your money's worth. Strangle the dude. Just go for it. If you're going to get fined, get your money's worth. Be like Wayne Brady on the Chappelle show back in the day, right? Literally look at him and ask, does this mean Ricky Pooj got a choke a bitch? Get your money's worth, sir. Sparks guard Lexi Brown will miss the rest of the regular season with a non-COVID illness, and it's odd. Now, look, the lady wants to keep it private, and I absolutely respect that. If it's your health, I get it. I get it. Nobody wants to be just an open book with everybody about their health issues, nor should they want to. But reports say that she has been in and out of the hospital for months. In and out of the hospital. She had been a starter up until June and she's in and out of the hospital. So yeah, I mean, it's a nice thing to keep your, her in your thoughts and your prayers, but something tells me there's a little bit more there that we obviously don't know about yet. But you let me know what you think in the comments thread. Talk to me about the Rams and Chargers on cut down day. Did the Dodgers do right by Tony Gonzalez? And if you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We're talking LA sports every single day here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corte El Queso production. Take care.